cutting the material. Let's just emphasize how important it is that you have the most current approved for fabrication set of drawings. Pausing you here real quick and then you can continue to watch. The Worker Efficiency app is in the Apple and Android store right now. It has 140 videos that spans OSHA courses, how to read drawings and more. Try it free for 30 days. You can go watch everything in that time period if you really wanted to. Now, if you are a freelancer, trade worker, etc., the Worker Efficiency app helps with time tracking on jobs, manages certificates, and more. If you are a business owner, the app helps you create a pipeline of skilled workers with upskilling abilities, data and profitability tracking, and the ability to curate your own training libraries. Find out more at workerefficiency.com. Download the app for free for 30 days and or ping us if you want to chat more. Thanks again for watching. We will let you go and get back to it and enjoy the rest of the video. Prior to beginning any fabrication, you need to make sure that you have the most current set of drawings that are clearly stamped and approved for fabrication. Let's just get that out of the way right now. This is the foundation for creating our members and parts that will ultimately be welded together to form all our assemblies that make up a structure. Assemblies are made up of members and parts. Members being beam-shaped steel, HSS tube steel, pipe, what have you, or what you could call our larger portion of our assembly. Parts being base plates, plates, angles, clips, or other small steel parts that are fitted and welded to our large member and go into forming our assembly. Again, a structure can be made up of hundreds or even thousands of assemblies. They're connected and welded together to make structures. What tools do we use in the shop for cutting and processing members and parts? Well, we can use bandsaws, plasma tables, CNC machines, oxy-fuel torches, robotic plasma cutters, shears, and more. In most modern fabrication shops, the use of CNC machines are becoming more prevalent and yes, still require a knowledgeable iron worker to input data. However, the trusty bandsaw is still very prevalent. Pulling steel to be cut. In order to pull steel from staging to be cut, you are typically issued a pick ticket and a cut list. A pick ticket and cut list tells you what materials need to be cut and to what lengths. Every company is different in how they carry out this process and procedure, but they all work in similar fashions. Remember that W21 by 50 by 44 foot steel beam we received and staged and stored earlier? Well, it's time to pull that steel per our pick ticket and cut list. The pick ticket will reference the material length, heat number, job number, and the quantity of the steel needed to be pulled. Traceability information we need to go out and find the correct steel needed to be cut. If we have an organized shop, it should be relatively easy to find steel staged and organized by the job number. Job number 2205 for our example. When you find that steel staged, you should always cross-reference traceability information, markings on the steel, and the pick ticket. Physically measure the steel to ensure that it matches the markings on the steel and your pick ticket. In our case, it should be W21 by 50 by 44 foot steel. Then we need to verify the quantity of steel that needs to be pulled is indeed there. Our specific ticket requires us to pull 12 W21 by 50 by 44 foot steel beams. After the steel is confirmed and accurate to the pick ticket, take the appropriate steps to safely move the steel for cutting. This is typically done by using a forklift, telehandler, overhead bridge crane, and or even a crane if applicable. With this large W21 by 50 by 44 foot steel, you would move and stage as much of the steel as possible onto horses or rollers where you will be cutting it. Now, as we have discussed previously, there are various methods for cutting steel, large steel members such as our W-shaped steel. We will continue as if you were cutting your steel on a bandsaw. This is still done every day in shops. Yes, there are CNC machines that can cut everything we need by inputting data. However, understanding the steps to measuring and cutting manually will only equip you with a greater degree of knowledge and understanding for what our CNC machine can accomplish later on. All right, we have our 12 W21 by 50 by 44 foot steel beams pulled. We have one queued up and ready to go on our rollers. And then we have our other pieces on horses adjacent to us we have our day's work cut out for us. Measure twice and cut once. One of, if not the most important rule when it comes to steel fabrication. This is the thing that causes the most problems in steel fabrication shops to date. As you now know, material is nested and purchased for efficiency's sake. The material we have is what we have. Incorrectly cut material may cause rework or if worse comes to worse, material needs to be repurchased. These are the mistakes that set work back, potentially delaying schedules and the delivery of product. 
Now, this is one of those things that's not an if, but a when. At some point, you probably will cut material incorrectly. Own your mistake, put steps in, and have checks and balances to avoid the issue, but it will happen to you at some point. You can kind of think of this as an initiation to becoming an iron worker. However, do all you can to avoid this happening in the first place by having your own quality control measures. Not only at that, but you need to follow the quality control measures that your company has set as their standard. Now, our cut list for this W steel details 12 beams that need to be cut. And the dimensions for these beams need to measure 41 feet, 7 and 1 8 inches long. These pieces we are about to cut are the beginnings of longitudinal support beams for our office building. This beam will become the main member in the assembly drawing beam 222A. And you can see that we are going to have 12 of these assemblies. Take your measuring tape and lay it across the entire steel beam. Our beam measures 44 feet long, and we need to cut this beam to 41 feet, 7 and 1 8 inches long. So we roughly have 2 feet, 5 inches worth of drop. Drop is material that is not needed or waste. Material that needs to be dropped or cut in order for us to achieve the lengths required by our drawings. Steel coming from the mill or from the service center distributor come with ends that are less than ideal. There are cuts and gashes in them. They are often not square, meaning they are not true or they are not straight and are just not usable. It is common practice to cut drop on each end of the steel so that each end of the steel is straight and square. We do have two feet, five inches worth of drop, but that doesn't mean you cut one foot on each side. Rushing and sloppy cuts for drop is what causes these accidental cuts. You should work within one to two inches of cutting your first end. CNC machines may work within one eighth of an inch for tolerances. But do what you find is reasonable. Not all material will have drop, so work according to the drop. You will want to use discretion to check and triple check drop and lengths. Using your measuring tape, soapstone, and square, you will etch thin, clean lines to account for the first inch of drop to be cut on our steel. So we have a clean and square end. Your beam will most likely lay with the web of the beam flat, the cut being perfectly perpendicular to the direction of the steel, thus giving us a square end to measure the beam to final length. Also, make sure the angle and the direction of your bandsaw is oriented correctly for a square clean cut, and then cut. Now that you have a clean square end, we can measure our beam to length, which is 41 and 7 and 1 8 inches long. Tips for etching. When you lay out your measuring tape across the web of the beam, make sure your grab hook on your tape measure isn't loose. A loose hook could cause measurements to be inaccurate, up to 1 quarters of an inch. Make sure it is nice and tight and as accurate as possible. You should be using a measuring tape that has been checked for accuracy. Stretch your tape a little beyond 41 feet, 7 and 1 8 inches, closest to the side of contact for your bandsaw. Etch arrow points with your soapstone that meet at 41 feet, 7 and 1 8 inches. Now that you have your measurement point at length, use your square to etch your lines across the beam indicating the cut line. You want to make sure you can accurately align the bandsaw with your length marks. Once you have your cut marks or etches on your steel, take your measuring tape off the beam and replace it again to double check the measurement. Remember, material is specifically purchased, so cutting without double checking your measurements and cut marks could cause overages or incurred costs due to your mistakes. Always measure twice and cut once. Are your measurements correct? Then cut. After your first member is cut, triple check to see that the length is correct. If you measure twice and cut once, then you shouldn't have any issues here. If it is wrong, you can wallow in self-pity for a minute before confessing your sins. Let's hope that this is not the case though. Always look for discrepancies between the cut list, the material picked, and the cut length and quantity. If something seems wrong, then it probably is wrong. Ask a supervisor or another person to check your work. There are no stupid questions when it comes to making sure you are doing things correctly. Double checking and triple checking goes for inputting data on a CNC machine as well. The way the fab software works and the data is entered often results in incorrect listings when it comes to CNC machines. Common errors include wrong shape, incorrect cut count, wrong heat number. If it looks wrong, it is wrong. Check with your supervisor and get clarification. Post cut markings and traceability. Now that you have cut your first member for our beam assembly 22 2A, we need to mark the steel for identification and traceability as it moves through the rest of the fabrication process. Our steel will be marked with the following. Cut list dimensions, which is 41 feet, 7 and 1 8 inches long. The job number, the ship mark, and heat number. In addition to the markings above, the pick ticket, cut list, and assembly sheets should designate if the beams are going to be cambered or not. Now, you're probably asking, what is camber? 
A camber is a bend that is induced into the beam. Don't worry, we'll go into more details for this later. Our beams do require camber per the drawings, camber being one and a quarter inches worth of camber to be exact. Since camber does need to be induced, a T will be marked on the top flange of the beam to indicate camber direction. Now we have measured and cut drop, we measured the length, we cut our main member, and we have marked our main member for traceability purposes. Repeat for the other 11 W21 by 50 by 44 foot steel beams. That's how cutting members is done. Again, thanks for watching. Go download the app and try it for free for 30 days. The app has so many capabilities for those in construction, manufacturing, service, and agencies at scale. Build a pipeline of skilled workers, build growth roadmaps, track skills and certifications, track estimated and actual time. There's so much in here. If you want more videos just like this, they are all there in the app, in the library. You can even broadcast your own training to your teams if you want to, all there in the app as well. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.